Hey guys, it's Jen and I'm back with another layout using my September stash kit. If you want to find out more about that kit, just head over to my blog at craftygenscow.com. And I am just pulling out some things that I might want to use. I found some photos that are from 2007, pictures of my daughter helping my husband do the dishes. And as soon as I saw them, it just you know, brought back old feelings and it made me think about how different her doing dishes then was compared to how it is now because now she complains when I ask her to do the dishes and back then she begged to help and you know how little kids are when it's like easier for you to do it without them but they want to help so bad so you let them because you want to teach them to work, <laughs> that kind of situation. Anyway, so I'm just pulling out some different papers and going to use a few scraps as well and I thought I would base the whole layout on this paper that has kind of a watercolor texture to the background and it's by We Are Memory Keepers. To help my photos stand out a little bit I'm going to back them on some white cardstock. Now the piece, the scrap that I had was a little bit smaller than what I needed so I just cut my photos down slightly um, and I'm okay with losing a little bit on the top and bottom of those photos. So just using my adhesive to adhere those <laughs> like you do and um, I'm just leaving pr a pretty thin photo mat there. I really like backing my photos with white. I, it just helps them pop a little bit. So I'm just creating some layers and this whole thing is going to change before I'm done with the layout, but I thought I would leave this in to kind of show you how sometimes you start with something and then it's not quite working how you thought it would or whatever and you need to change it up and that's completely fine. So I just wanted to show that here. I'm just putting the layers all around the photos and it actually it looks fine, it looks okay. The problem comes in a little bit later and I decided, I found this word happy that I cut, it's one of the cut files from my shop, and I cut it out in white cardstock, and I thought it would be cute to do a title called Happy Helper, because in the journal I'm going to talk about how she was so happy to help back then, and now it's a little bit of a different story. But I'm having a hard time finding um, letters that will go below the word happy, because the P's and the Y dip down. Uh, it's hard for me to find something that will look good with it because I like to nestle my titles in together. What I'm doing now that you can't see is looking through my thickers and different stickers, so I'm sorry that you're left out of that. I found these ones that have kind of a, a bunch of different shades of teal, and I thought that those might look nice. I'm, I want something that will stand out but not too much. I don't want it to be too differing from the colors that I already have on there. I thought black would be way too dark. So I thought these might work. So I'm putting them on some wax paper so I can move it around to decide, to help me decide. And you can see I'm just kind of tapping my fingers there, wondering if that's really the right option. I will eventually change my mind. Still tapping. I don't know why, but I just struggled with this layout. It wasn't turning out the way that I envisioned. And I'm kind of learning as I go. I have some go-to designs that I can always use, but sometimes I just want to switch things up and do something a little bit differently. And so when I do those kinds of layouts, I like to pre-plan them and kind of uh, figure out what I want to do ahead of time so I can try a new technique or something. In this case, I didn't do that. And I just went with one of my tried and true designs, which is great. Uh, but in the end, and in the end, I am happy with the layout, but I kind of was hoping for something more. So um, I think the next few layouts I make, I will try something a little bit different and pre-plan it out. So it's good to try different methods. But if you're just looking to get a bunch of pages done, totally just go to your you know, old tricks, layering up papers or doing a grid design or whatever it is that, that works for you. So now I'm thinking maybe a small title, like a the word helper really small in um, tile alphabet stickers will work great and so I'm looking for some that might work and you can see at the very bottom of the screen that I have my 
little box of um, stickers and embellishments there. So I'm looking for some small letter stickers that I might be able to use. And I find this dear, this is an old Dear Lizzie sticker sheet. And the alphabet that was on it was the perfect colors to match that heart paper. And so I thought I might use that. But in the end, it happens to be too, too much of the same color. So it kind of works. And I, I kind of like, now that I'm looking at it, kind of like the way that that looks overlapping the P and everything. Um, I'm going to missed the word happy so that it isn't white because it feels a little stark in comparison to the rest. So I'll end up going with some Heidi Swap Mustard Color Shine to kind of play off that number two that I cut out of a Dear Lizzie Cut Apart Sheet from the Fine and Dandy Collection. If you want to see the products that I that I included in my stash kit, I'll link to my original stash kit video below or you can just check out the playlist called Stash Kits on my YouTube channel. It's also over on my blog. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm still thinking about what I want to do, and I'm sorry there's a lot of like <laughs> dead space here while I'm just thinking about stuff, but I really did struggle, and I don't, I don't know. So here's where I'm like, maybe I'm going to switch it all up. I'm, I'm trying a different approach here, and... I'm going to change up the entire way that I create this layout. So I've mentioned in my past couple videos that I'm really liking the look of the punched out circles on my scraps and the way they look when I layer them in on my layouts. And so I'm going to keep that punched circle over there on the left just showing. So what I'm doing now is layering some papers to the sides of each of the photos. And I like it on the left side, but not as much on the right. So I'm going to keep the layers on the right side and I'm going to get rid of that word happy and I'm going to go back to these thickers that I tried. They're white with a tiny, tiny black polka dot. I found this piece of cardstock in my stash that's a really light creamy yellow and I really like the way that looks but in order to make everything kind of stand off the back of the page, I matted my two photos on that original watercolor paper that I had to start with. And I'm liking the way it's looking more already. I don't know. I almost always use a white background, so this is a little bit different for me, but I'm liking the way that it looks. So now I'm going to see what I can use for the word happy if I'm going to use that helper um, that I have sitting off to the right with those white polka dot thickers. So I'm using the little yellow letter stickers that came that I included in the kit and it's cut off from one of the Simple Stories sticker sheets that's a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. I didn't have a Y so I just made one out of a V and then I cut a little tail off of a K and it works fine. So I'm going to go ahead with that and let's see what am I doing now. Oh I'm going to mist on the background just to create a little bit of interest. So I'm using some Mr. Huey's in Splash. And then I'm going to do some droplets with some mustard um, Heidi Swap gold or <laughs> gold color shine. I always say Heidi Swap gold color shine because that's the color I always use. But this one was mustard Heidi Swap color shine. And it's more yellowy than the gold. So it works well with the yellow. And the drips are just a little bit too painty and I'm too lazy to really dry them so I was trying to wipe it up with some paper but then I did pull out my heat tool. So I'm going to layer my layers on top of that misting and the letter stickers were a little bit of a different color of yellow than what I wanted and so I just used a Copic marker and it's yellow, let me tell you the number, Y19, it's called Napoli yellow, Napoli and it just darkened them uh, slightly to kind of match the color shine a little bit more and that number two. So now I'm gluing everything down and I kept my layers behind that left photo pretty messy just because I wanted it to kind of look haphazard and like you just kind of tossed it there. And now I'm going to adhere that whole thing to the background. So I'm going to rest the word helper just to the, le to the right of where that heart paper stops. And I've said this before, but any time that you can kind of nestle things in or make things overlap, it just makes 
the layout feel more intentional and like things belong together. So I always try to do that. And I'm lifting up the letters just a little bit so that I can tuck some of the yellow letters behind them so that they just kind of rest on top. And I like the way that looks. And now I'm going to use some of these Heidi Swap enamel stickers just to point in toward the photos. One says super fun and one says so sweet. And then I'm going to layer some of these confetti stickers from Maggie Holmes Crate Paper uh, just next to the photos. And I just like the interest that it adds. And it just, it doesn't matter what the stickers say or anything like that. If you have extra stickers or you don't know exactly what you'll do with a ticket or something like that, just put them in your layers because it doesn't really matter what it says. It's just about the texture and the color. So I'm going to use a couple of these puffy stickers, which are from Gossamer Blue. And I'm bringing in a little bit of the red. It plays off the, the reddish hearts on the paper. And I'm using that little coffee cup. I'm not a coffee drinker, so uh, it's hard for me to use cups like that. But it works perfectly because my daughter is pulling cup after cup out of the dishwasher and handing it to my husband. I, we were just talking about how cute it was when she was little. She would stand up on the dishwasher and then she would hand you stuff, but she was like quick. You had to be fast to get things put away before she handed you the next thing. So, and now she kind of, it's a fight to get her to do the dishes. So I'm in my journaling. I'll just talk about that a little bit. I'm using some of the stickers that were on the roll of stickers. That's from Create Paper Notes and Things, which is an older collection. And they're craft colored with gold foil on them. I really like those. And I, you can see that I layered in some of the vellum die cuts. So it says best and girl up at the top, and then there's a heart at the bottom right now. I'll find another heart to go at the top here in just a minute. I am using some of the enamel dots, and at first I sprinkled them everywhere, but then I decided to just put three in a row at the top and then three in a row at the bottom, just to kind of contain them a little bit more. And that helps me to use the larger enamel dots. They're really hard for me to use. I like to sprinkle the small ones, but the larger ones are easier for me if I put them in a row. So I'm going to put the date at the bottom, 2007, just the year. And I'll put the date of today next to the journaling because the journaling is reflective. So 2007 is when the photos were taken and then 2015 for the journaling so there I found another heart vellum heart and I am pulling out the stamps to see if I want to use some of those and I will use a couple of them I'm going to use one that says this is this is what matters and one that says sorry I'm just looking at the layout everyday moments and before I do that, I'm going to get my vellum shape stuck down. I'm using my Xyron little X runner, and it puts a sticker backing on the back of the vellum shapes so you don't see any adhesive because the whole entire back is covered with sticker. And I really, really like that for vellum. So I've got those put down now, and I'm just thinking about tucking a little bit more, oh, I do, of that dictionary paper just over to the right hand side of the photo. And now I'm stamping in Juniper ink from close to my heart. It matches that kind of aqua greeny color perfectly. And I stamped this is what matters in everyday moments just like I said before. I stamped it at the bottom and then I also stamped it a little bit at the top just so that it kind of was even. So you can see my embellishments go out to the sides of the photos but the main, like what you mostly see is kind of it's a loose diagonal line going from the top to the bottom. And I really like that. I'm adding some extra adhesive to those thickers because they don't stick very well. And I'm using Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive in a fine line bottle because it dispenses the glue in a fine line. <laughs> I think we all have those bottles now. If you don't, I will definitely link to it. And if I forget to link to it, I've linked to it on several posts before. So check out my blog at craftygenscow.com. I'm writing my journaling with a black Muji pen. And like I mentioned a few times, 
I'm just talking about how different it was then compared to now. Back then, she was a happy helper, and now she kind of begrudgingly does the dishes. She still does them, but um, she was so cute and eager back in the day. So that's what I'm talking about. I like to point out these little differences. I don't go back and scrap photos very often, but occasionally. And this was a fun one to do. I had forgotten about these photos. So like I mentioned, after I do the journaling, I will stamp the date, which is September 22nd, 2015, just to the left of the journaling. And I'm going to stamp it up and down. And I like the way it looks. I didn't want the date to go below the journaling because right now the bottom is all kind of lined up where the stamping ends and where the journaling ends is even. So I don't want to take that line down any further because I want there to be a little bit of a border on the bottom. So I think about things like that when I am creating these layouts is how much space do I have on the sides and on the top and bottom? And is it even? Is one side a lot more space? And is that intentional? Things like that. I'm putting a little extra glue behind these stickers. And that is going to complete the layout. I hope that you've enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Or you can head over to my blog where I'll have much more information, as well as links to all of the available products. Be sure to check out my Stash Kits playlist here on YouTube, where you can see the rest of the videos where I use my Stash Kits. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.